afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Mad Dragon Six Nations. We're on to round three after the break in this Six Nations. Two big sides, Italy at home playing Ireland, taking a quick look at the table as it stands at the end of round two. England up there in first place, joint on points with Ireland, but that points difference just separating the two of them. Italy in this game are currently in fourth after a fantastic opening round versus France, which sees France down in sixth place. This is a big game for both sides. Italy are hoping to keep on top of a good performance this Six Nations, whereas Ireland are looking to take the top of the table. Paolo Garbisi will get us kicked off and underway as Ireland want to try and get off quickly at the start of this game but it is the Italians who take the advantage from the outset they spread it right Stephen Varney goes out to Federico Mori no one outside there for him and gets taken down by Ireland we know how good the breakdown situation is for Ireland they'll be looking for those jackal penalties all day long Italy cannot afford to leave players isolated in this one. They're going to let their line reset a little bit. Biji gets it out to Maurice. A great tackle coming in there from Ian Henderson. Gibson Park passes it out wide. And the Italians have already missed a couple tackles really early on into this opening five minutes so far. They'll want to try and close that defensive line. We know the speed of the Irish wingers. They won't want to let these lads get away as Gibson Park thinks he sees a gap open up in that little midfield bit but Brex steals it back passes it out Fischetti gives a poor offload though to James Ryan managing to recover the ball for Ireland it's a loose pass out wide but it might work for them Andrew Porter tried to get it out to van der Fleer but Federico Rutzer coming into the safety of Italy Giovanni gets it out. Nice pass out to the captain, Lamaro. Maurice gets taken down in that midfield. Currently, Italy are going backwards in possession. They're trying something a little bit different here. Brex thinks he sees a bit of room. It's not the best kick. I think it might have slightly got touched in the air there, not allowing him to get as many meters as he would want to. And Ireland back on the front foot as we see Tyg Furlong running hard at the line. What else do you expect from the big man? But there's a big tackle in the midfield. There's a dominant tackle. That's where you want to be seeing from Italy in this game. Trying to get on that front foot not letting Ireland get a lot of momentum into this game. They try and go wide through the big man again, but he's taken down. Neither team really getting a lot of distance in this game. Ireland still wanting to keep the ball in hand. They've not looked for any kicks as of yet. They're wanting to keep it in possession. They know bonus points could be on the line for them in this one. They want to try and get those four tries, but currently the Italian defense holding out slightly better. Oh, as Paolo Garbisi with a superb read catches Ireland slightly off guard as Lamaro gets it out wide to Bruno, but the Irish winger shuts him down well, and they will get the turn know where van der Fleer stands in in that scrum half and there's the first kick of the game from Ireland I believe as Sexton moves it up the field Padovani running it back up the field gets it out wide to Federico Mari thinks he sees a gap in that backfield it's nice not a very blustery day today it is sunny but not really any sort of win so the kickers will be having a bit of a field day if the ball decides to go to the air a bit more in this game Gibson Park spreads it out wide but a big crunching hit Sexton drops the ball but the ref decides it's gone backwards Italy have got a turn Turnover out of nowhere. Canone takes it to the line, but no one's supporting him. And there's another turnover in that midfield yet again. Italy are just not supporting their own man at the breakdown. Gibson Park going for those sniping runs. As we've been seeing all day so far in this opening half. Desperately trying to go himself. The rest of the island support not really backing him that much for him to get a nice little offload after doing all that hard work. Italian defence back on the front foot again. Ireland going for a lot of these one-off runners. It's not really working for them. They might want to try and mix it up in this second half as Riccioli gets it out to Canone. Luca Bigi, the man, isolated out on the wing. They would have maybe wanted someone a little bit speedier out on that wing. It's Ruruzza. Gets it out to Bruno. Got a lot of work to do, but he's got the lock chasing him down. It's Ian Henderson with a brilliant tackle shipping him into touch. Let's see who can win the first line out of the game today. It's taken a little bit of a while to get the set piece underway and it's Italy who come away with it. Stain doesn't get the nicest pass, unfortunately, and Ireland somehow recover their own ball. After quite a poor line out, Ireland regarded as one of the best teams in the line out. They won't have been particularly happy with that as a first one for them. They go for an up and under. Italy trying to mix it up a bit using that aerial battle they've been doing well. Bundiaki hands in the ruck. Now here is a big call. 38th minute, nil nil. Italy will be pretty happy with how this game has been going for them so far. They've gone for the kick at post. I have to say, I think this is probably the uh, the right move. Make the most of an opportunity opening up. It's quite far. It's going to be on the end of Paolo Garbisi's range. We'll see how he gets on with the kick. 
and it does go over. Italy take this game 3 0 just before half time. Now, one of the big things in rugby can you just seal it out? They'll want to go at half time on the up. Not a lot of people will have been expecting this, but after a superb win against France in the opener, Italy will be extremely happy with that. And you know what? I think we can see it already. They'll just want to get this off the park, but Ireland say no. Bruno forced to continue a superb tackle from the Irish defenders. They're rushing off the line, not allowing him to kick it out. And suddenly Italy find themselves trying to defend their own line. They pick it up again and suddenly is there room? They're trying to play it out. This could have gone terribly wrong for them. Who's going to get back? It's Maury who drops the ball. Oh my goodness, James Lowe is going to get over the line. I can't believe it. It absolutely felt like the ball had to be kicked out. The Irish defence so quick off the line, stopping the kick from going out. It looked like Italy's defence had managed to recover. Probably the first real mistake from Italy today. Saw that ball go loose. The kick along the ground maybe wasn't the correct call. It was Maury out on the wing. Big tackle coming in from Keith Earls. Ball dropped. And James Lowe, the one who will be finishing tries like that if you give him the opportunity. What a recovery from Ireland where it looked like this game might be going in at halftime. Nil-nil. It will instead be 7-3 to Ireland at the end of the first half. And what a superb first half we got to see in this one. Both teams a little bit shaky to start off. The defence versus attack has been a real key area of this game. Ireland have been trying to go for some one-off runners. It's not really been working working from the Italian defense is holding well. I feel like Italy might have even been spaced slightly too much in that opening first half. But once they got used to the style Ireland were trying to play, the defensive side has worked for them pretty well. Took a while to get some points in this game. The first point's not actually coming until the 38th minute of the match from the boot of Paolo Garbisi off the back of that penalty given away by Bundy Aki. Making the most of the opportunities. They know it's going to be a hard game. Take the three points when they are on offer. We did think Italy were going to go in at the break in the lead but it is Ireland that take the lead at half time after a great recovery try the ball dropped after a massive tackle by Gary Ringrow sees James Lowe pick it up still a lot of hard work to do beating two defenders and getting himself over the try line Sexton with the conversion sees Ireland go in at half time 7-3 On to the second half then, and there has been a change at halftime. Patanelli is on for Italy. They're obviously going to want to try and have a bit more possession in this half. They spent a lot of time on the back foot in that opening half, so they brought on some of the uh, the bigger boys to try and get on the front foot. Some big ball carriers. Bruno with a nice little opening run, but finds himself a little bit isolated. Canone tries to mix it up. The lock himself has gone for a chip over the top. Nearly managed to get there, but Italy have made a nice little 50 metres. That is a great opening from them, and we'll see if I can try and exit. Gibson Park will go for the box kick. It looks nicely weighted, to be fair. Pierre Bruno thinks he sees a bit of room in that backfield. The wind not with him, though. Sees Hugo Keenan on the nice recovery. Josh van der Fleer taking it to the line. Looked a little bit isolated, but Ireland do well in terms of that breakdown. We know how good they are at retaining their own ball. The ball recycling speed has been a little bit slow for Ireland today. Has given Italy a bit more of an opportunity to just set their defensive line, he says, as Hugo Keenan gets on the break. James Lowe, the try scorer, waited on the wing. Maybe would have wanted that ball to have been kicked on and chased down. We know how fast he is. He could have got there first. Gibson Park again, slow on the recycling of the ball. You think there might need to be a change of scrum half if they don't speed it up in this second half. They spread out wide. Oh, it's a nice little run from Gary Ringrose hitting the gap in the midfield there. James Ryan has to fill in at the scrum half position. They're going to try and go through the big men again until they can reset Johnny Sexton not really getting in position to help the distribution of this ball which is slowing them down Italy though cannot retain ball at all they're really trying to get it back off them but we know how good Ireland are Josh van der Fleer taking it hard to the line good tackle though by the midfielder there to shut him down they still try and work their way through a double tackle needed to take down Keelan Doris is a big man once he gets on the front foot Josh van der Fleer though we've seen him do this before nice little break through the middle that Italian defensive line is is beginning to close up. James Lowe tries to take it down the wing, but does drop the ball, and it will go into touch for an Italian line out. Italy tries something a little bit different here and throw it over the top to Paolo Garbisi, and suddenly Pierre Bruno finds himself isolated. There might have been a late tackle there. The referee might want to go back and have a look at that. Keelan 
Doris trying to take it through the middle as well. Goes for a nice little off-road. It looked like Keenan maybe even could have gone on the outside there. I'm not sure whether they've gone for the right move there. Maybe he could have run it himself, taken it to the line a little bit further. Gibson Park again, slow, getting that ball out from that ruck. Italy are doing a good job at just slowing down the ball just enough to let their defensive line reset. That is a big tackle in the midfield. Does drop the ball, but the referee says not a knock-on. Must have gone backwards in the tackle. Italy slowly moving backwards. They are managing to hold it. They're trying to keep that defensive line organised. Ireland again through the work of Sexton, but again, we'll take him out of that distribution line. They'll have to go through the forwards for another carry. There's been a real tactic today from the Irish team to just go for those one-off runners through the forwards, trying to tire this Italian defence down. You can sort of see it working with how much room is beginning to be exposed on those wings. Italy know something needs to be done. We've entered the 70th minute of the game. There's been an awful lot of defensive work from Italy today. They haven't really had their chance on the ball. They'll hopefully try and get up the field at some point in the second half, though, just to try and get some extra points. But Ireland just doing the hard graft at the minute. This is Rugby 101. Just keep the ball in hand, go through the phases, make the other team work for it, and they are doing it exceptionally well. This time Sexton taking it to the line. Italy there again on the good defensive. They're not really making as much ground as I'm sure Ireland would have wanted in this game, but doing just about enough to keep Italy out of it as Italy fight for that one. They thought maybe that opportunity was opening up. Ireland are doing extremely well. This game taking a real slow impact as Gibson Park breaks away from nowhere. He's been looking for it all day, but unfortunately not managed to make the most of it. But in this instance, he does make the break. Italy steal it back as the clock turns red. What can they do with it? Federico Ruzza supporting his man takes it to the line and suddenly it's actually the Irish defence that seems to have been shortened down a little bit. Pierre Bruno got a lot of work to do out on his own there. Let's see what Italy can do with one last stab at this game. Negri takes a massive collision on. What an enormous tackle by the Irish centre there. Coming in, absolutely clattering him. Shook him up. They took the ball and they kicked it out. And that will be the game. Ireland take this one on a much lower scoring game than they probably would have hoped for. Seven Seven points to three. Italy did take the opportunities that arose. Unfortunately, just not enough opportunities to actually keep them in this game. Only the three points from the boot of Paolo Garbisi. Ireland moved to the top of the leaderboard with that win. Seven points to three. I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. And we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.